The Great Search, where every single week Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering to help you find the things you need on digikey.com. We're in the middle of a part shortage, so this particular segment that we do each week on Desk of Lady Ada is even more useful. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search this week? Okay, this week's Great Search is actually a continuation of last week's Great Search, um, because when you're out of a part, uh, you'll do anything to get an alternative. Um, so uh, we're, we're not like a super shortage, but we're having a little bit of a shortage for the AP2112, uh, which is our go-to regulator. We love the 3.3 volt regulator. It has 600 milliamps out. It's got a very low dropout. It's stable with ceramic capacitors. It's just an all around great little regulator. And we use it in so many of our boards, like almost every board in Feather uses it. It's also very inexpensive. It's about 10 cents. Uh, in quantity and so um, we have a bunch on order and we're gonna get some more but uh, while we're waiting for some to come in I want to be able to stretch out that supply and also I'm thinking like you know I I always um, I you know I take advice from Mr. Lady Ada and Mr. Lady Ada uh, it used to say uh, never let a crisis go to waste um, now we <laughs> say let every third crisis go to waste yeah. but try to like not let two out of three crises go yeah. to waste yeah when five crises come up it's okay to say uh, drop ne- one. never let a crisis go to waste but maybe uh, fifth one uh, th- that one can kind of go to waste it's on, it's on us yeah. so, it's not a yogurt card where if you get like five crisis stamps you get a free crisis so. right it's okay. So, you know, seeing that, you know, there's other parts we've had to find alternatives for, like, you know, MOSFETs and, you know, crystals and whatever. Those are much easier to replace. But a regulator, what's interesting about that is, you know, because we have this kind of favorite regulator and it's using so many things, it, not being able to get it is more of a supply shock than, like, just not being able to get, you know, a, a microcontroller. Like, if we can't get a microcontroller, which we can't, um, only those boards that use that chip go out. But if you if you have something that literally 70% of your boards use and you can't get it, it's a little bit more stressful. And so um, last week what we did is we did a great search where I showed how to find um, an alternative for a lot of our breakout boards that don't need as high current. Uh, they can get away with 150 milliamp regulator. I still want that ultra low dropout. Of course, I want it to be pin compatible, uh, not require you know bypass cap, uh, you know, fairly low quiescent current, uh, fairly low noise, and we found a couple of good alternatives. Um, this week, I want to future proof myself. I want to say, look, you know, um, we found an alternative for the breakout boards, for the, but for the feathers and the dev boards, uh, we still want to have um, a high current output regulator. So let's let's quickly go to the overhead, and I'll just show what I mean. Um, since this is the Cutie Pie ESP32. Uh, this has an ESP32 uh, dual core, 240 megahertz um, microcontroller with Wi-Fi. It uses a lot of current. When you turn that Wi-Fi on and start, you know, blasting or uh, connecting to the SSID, the power ramps up, uh, and you can easily use 300 milliamps. And so, I definitely can't use 150 milliamp regulator. It wants something that is is stable and good for 500, 600 milliamps. That's ideal because you can also power your peripherals from the same um, LDO. Uh, And so you'll see here, uh, this is the LDO. I'm using the AP2112K. Again, I love it. Um, And another alternative that is drop-in replaceable for that same current is the RT9080. Uh, We covered that in a previous great search when I showed uh, looking for a a much lower quiescent current. Only thing is that that regulator is also impossible to get. And um, both of these have pretty intense lead time. So let's go to DigiKey. Let's go see what we can find. This is the part, again, I can't get. Uh, lead time stretching out into 80 weeks. I feel like I'm like a, a weather lady now. And I'm like stretching out <laughs> into the, you know, the, the weekend. It's going to be hot. It's going to be 80 weeks of lead time. Um, but what I do like about this is, again, it's got that high current output. So um, before what we did is we focused on pin compatibility. Let's find something that has the same SOT23 or TSOT235. This time I'm going to look for a fixed regulator that's about the same size or maybe smaller. Maybe I can make um, a version of our, my PCBs going forward that can use two different packages because that flip-flop design can, um, can really save you when you can use two alternatives. So we're still going to go with the surface mount parts. 
Um, I definitely need to have an enable feature, but the problem is sometimes the, the features have more stuff, so I'm actually gonna leave that unchecked. I'll just gonna look for something around uh, 0.4 volt at the <coughs> max 600 milliamp dropout. Uh, current output 600, but I can go higher, so I'm not gonna check that either. <coughs> and then I'm gonna check, I do want one fixed positive 3.3 volt output, and I want to be active. Okay, so we've got a couple of similar parts. Um, you'll see there are a lot of SOC23 looking things, but there are also some weird SMT parts. Also, of course, since I didn't filter by the package, I'm getting SOC223s. Um, so now let's look at what's really important to me, which is the current output. Again, I need something that's like at least 500 milliamps. Um, I'll go up to like an amp. I think anything more than that's going to be a pretty big package. It's not going to be something really tiny. So I'm going to apply that. Um, let's look at quiescent current. Um, I definitely want something that has like 100 microamps or less. So because the, the AP2112 is about like 80 microamps. It's actually a little bit less, maybe 40. Um, and I definitely don't want high quiescent current. So we'll apply that. All right, now we're doing pretty good. <clears throat> so let's look uh, what we've got as some options. So I do care about pricing. I mean, um, you know, I, I can't really afford to put a dollar regulator on every feather if I'm gonna sell the feather for about 10 bucks retail. So uh, let's put in the view price at 10K pieces. Okay, now we get some good options. Um, so first up, there is this pin compatible Runic regulator. Um, there's also this one, which actually looks pretty nice, but it's not in stock. Um, looking at other packages, there's this uh, 6DFN, um, which you know might fit. Um, but what I really like the look of is after I got past the SOT 223s, <clears throat> is a couple of um, on semi NCP parts. Um, these are really tiny. These are, are one millimeter by one millimeter SMT, but they do come in a couple different configurations. Um, and they have ones, uh, there's a few BGAs, I'm gonna skip those. It looks like other companies are also using that same, you know, Ford, like the, you know, triangular DFN um, style. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, first I'm gonna look at, uh, maybe drop out and maybe filter on that. So let's look. So max drop out, remember the previous um, AP2112 had a drop out of about 0.4 volts over 600 milliamps. I don't want anything much higher than that. <clears throat> so let's uh, filter for about half a volt. I think that's still quite high, but it's better than nothing. Um, and then voltage input max is fine, five volts. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, we've got uh, a couple good options here. Um, the B33s uh, I really liked. Um, oh wait, hold on. I lost my NCPs. The NCPs are Oh, interesting. I didn't select the right dropout max. Huh. Okay. Not sure what I did. Um, but I did like the look of these, um, the NCPs. I will say that one, one thing I, uh, once I saw like this little DFN package, I was interested in it. And when I looked at um, the data sheet, there's one thing to watch out for. There's an A series and a B series. And the ACE, so you have to be careful. A regulator is a regulator until it's like it does something funky. Um, this regulator has an option. If you look here, there's a, um, when you disable it, it doesn't just float the output, it actually pulls the output low, which I don't want. Like I don't, I, cause sometimes I have um, like a feather that is disabled, but you can still um, provide like an external 3.3 volt somehow. Um, I don't, have a pulled down 3.3 volt and I don't really like that in a regulator. Although I can see why somebody would want it in some cases. So you do want to make sure you get the B type um, for this. 
So when I looked through these, um, yeah, I saw that there was the NCV one, uh, 8177B, and then uh, the NCP 176 also available in the 60FN. Um, and then I think I also looked at what was actually in stock right now, which is like very few things. Let's see if I can find the, uh, the part again. No. Oh, you know why? Because I, I bought them. But um, the, <laughs> I don't remember. I was like, I have to buy them before the show. The, um, so I ended up uh, looking at the NCP-167 and uh, B, um, which, had, which came in uh, a BGA and a DFN. And the reason I liked this one is it's uh first off they had some stock which i purchased they I, I left some in it's 700 milliamps output and very very low uh dropout only a, you know a third of a volt at 700 milliamps um and again it's got uh, this very tiny um xdfn shape and it seemed like um ncp the on semi this ncp series they had a lot of like different alternatives you know, the 60FN version that I showed, like the, there's a, also a 60FN version, it doesn't fit within a SOT 23.5. Like you can't have both share the same package. But I did find that, um, you know, I downloaded from DigiKey, they have a service where you can get like the CAD model. So I went here and I downloaded uh, the footprint um, directly and imported it into Eagle, and then I just tweaked it a little bit to pass um, my DRC, and then you can see here, this part here, I have it situated within the SOT 23.5. And so, um, you know, for my next board that I run, I'm going, you know, because it's like, it's so tiny. It is small, it does, <clears throat> it does fit into a 6.6 six rule, if you need 7.7 seven or 8.8, eight, it's going to be tougher. I mean, this is a very small part. I'll show it on the overhead as well. But because it does fit inside that package, um, what I might do is the next few boards I run is have this sort of flip-flop design where you can use either or. It doesn't take up any more space. And then you can see, you know, the pads, you have to kind of route them. Like, it's not, the order of the pins is not exactly the same. So you have to kind of like, the V in pin kind of has to go around a little bit. But... I think I can have a you know a PCB that has either and have the stencil have either and then you know whichever I can get if I can't get the the SOT 23 I can go with the DFN or vice versa because they seem like they're very equivalent um, regulators. So let me show this on the overhead. So I did pick up some of these, uh, the NCP 167B. And let me see. I mean, these are so small. I just got this package today, so we're going to look. Oh, see, I already lost a bunch. Okay. So these, it's like, they're really tiny. I mean, you definitely can't hand solder them. Yeah, I mean, you can barely see it. Um, but it, it does have a little triangular uh, center ground pad. And it has a little, I mean, like, yeah, you can't really see it. But it's, you see it's shining on the tip of my finger. It does have the four pads. Um, again, it's a, it's a little bit of a scary small package, but it seems to be quite popular. It'll fit inside the package of the, I mean, I prefer the SOT 23.5, um, but I think the next prototype I make, I'm gonna try to have this as an alternative. And, um, you know, if this, it's a little bit more expensive, but I will say if I'm making, um, you know, a cutie pie, this is a lot smaller. I could save some space. Um, it's only like, you know, 25 cents instead of 10 cents. Uh, it's a lot smaller and maybe I can fit, you know, an extra, if I need a couple extra traces on the top, um, this will give me some clearance. So I'm going to try this, you know, as, as an alternative. I think, um, even though I don't need to use it yet, um, knowing that this part shortage is only going to extend, I'm a little bit more wary now of, of having this dependence on a part where, uh, if I can't get any, it's like I can't really manufacture anything. So thankfully, you know, I'm, I'm finding ways around it. Um, but do yourself a favor because I think this part shortage is going to be another year and a half or two years. So uh, you'll thank yourself later for 
um, adding multiple package options to your design today. It's going to be a long winter, spring, summer. It's Groundhog Day in Fort Shortage Land. All right, that's uh, The Great Church. All right, thanks, everybody. Where in the world is that part I need? I didn't